and welcome to Married at First Sight a recap review of season 16 episode 11 and my name is Deborah and we're going to be talking about all the various couples I do separate videos on each individual couple and at the end of each video there will be links above my head and you can click on them and go to the next video I'll also keep the links in the description box and also in the uh, comment section you can just click on it there as well and now we're moving on to the next couple and that's going to be a cursing and shack and this week like i told y'all this is the king and queens of the flip <laughs> that's what i'm calling this whole week that's what they should have named this whole episode of this week kings and kings of the flip like i said eris is the founding uh, organizer of this social club called the kings and queens of the flip and let me tell you a cursing is giving him a run for his money because she is the queen of the flip and when i talk about the flip y'all i'm talking about when you blame what's wrong with you on other people <laughs> And you don't have to do none of your own work. And all you do is keep coming up with suggestions on what the other person should do. So you can stay just where you are because you're not the problem. Are they the problem? When you got messed up emotions and you don't know how to love and you don't know how to open your mouth and you don't know how to talk and you don't know how to solve problems. You know the best way to stay there? You start telling other people what they need to do. <laughs> The reason I don't talk to you, Deborah, is because you got on a green shirt. Or when you change your shirt, or maybe I'll talk to you. You go out and you change your green shirt. You come back and they come up with another reason. Well, the reason I don't want to talk to you is because your hair is all in your face. <laughs> they keep you running around fixing stuff about yourself. And they don't have to do a doggone thing. And let me tell you, that's who Kirsten is. Kirsten is the queen of the flip. The queen of the flip. Zero accountability. I'm talking zero. And this episode was horrendous. You know, this episode opens up and it uh, shows Kirsten once again with no homemaking skills. She don't even, she don't even know how to repot a plant. <laughs> woo, 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 people, I tell you. So now we know she don't know how to decorate a house. She doesn't know how to source furniture. Talking about COVID. That was whatever. Okay, that's another excuse. Like I said... Everything Kirsten doesn't know how to do, she blames it on other things. Why don't you have any furniture? Oh, because it was COVID and the furniture takes six weeks to get here. Girl, you ain't ordering. <laughs> she act like she important furniture or coming from Italy and all these other kind of places. Girl, you could have easily gone down to any department store anywhere and got you a nightstand. Give me a break. A nightstand. We're not talking about you had to have a nice furniture. You could have had anything from Ikea or Walmart, <laughs> Target. I, anywhere you can go and get you Amazon, you could have gone anywhere and had you a nice end. And you talking about everything a call takes a six months. That ain't true. Amazon got Amazon Prime, a two-day delivery. She act like we fools. And then we figured out uh, she don't know how to mop a, mop a floor. And then we found out she don't know how to decorate for a party. I, I don't even think a cursor knows how to cook. We ain't seen her cook nothing. And now we know she didn't know how to pick out a plant at the lo local nursery. And now she don't even know how to repot a plant. Oh, but she got two degrees, a master's and a bachelor. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I want to scream and shake cursing if I want to just give her a hug. You know, part of me, the auntie in me, the auntie in me wants to go over and say, girl, come on over here. Come on over here. Come on, Kirsten. Give me a hug, girl. But if we're going to make progress, if we are going to make progress, we have to stop the flip. We have to stop pointing out things in other people. And it doesn't even mean that some of the things she may point out are not true. Sometimes they are true and sometimes they are valid, what she says. But that's not the point. The point isn't to keep making other people better. The point is to make you better. Because even though if you point out in something in someone else, it does make them better. But what happens is it doesn't make you better. This is why you don't grow. So what will happen is, let's say you're the type of person that every time you're with a person, when something is wrong in a situation, you know, maybe your relationship is going poorly, whatever. What you do is you tend to point out what they did wrong. Now, they might have done those things wrong. They might be doing it wrong. They may have that problem you point out. So it's not that you're lying, but what you do is you point it out in them. So let me tell you what happens. A walk with me, people. What happens is you're actually sharpening them. It does look critical in the beginning, but what you're also doing is you're sharpening them. But you know who you're not sharpening? Yourself. Because you've taken a zero accountability. 
So then what happens is uh, during the relationship, all you do is point out what they need to do differently, what they do wrong. That's what you do. And then next thing you know, the relationship becomes contentious because that person gets tired of you taking zero accountability and blaming them for everything. So, but during that relationship, they actually started working on things about themselves. You know why? Because they were conscientious that they did listen to you. They did say, you know what? That is a part of a problem with me. I am going to work on that. So you're in a relationship with them for a year, two years. They work on those things. By two years, what they realize is, dang, I actually have done a lot of growth. And guess what? You, the person who likes to blame, hasn't done any growth. None. So then you break up. That person goes on to a new relationship. So when they show up in the new relationship, they're actually a better person thanks to you because you were so critical of them, always telling them what they did wrong. They actually grew and got better. They go on to the next relationship and they come in that relationship better. So their new partner gets a better version of them uh, thanks to you. But when you go into your next relationship, guess what you haven't done? Grown. Because you never accepted any accountability. You never grew. You never changed. So all your partners get better and better and better and better, but you stay the same. This is what happens when people, women, will say, you know what, all the men I date somehow or another after me they get married this was what was jasmina's problem a couple of seasons ago remember jasmina used to tell the story that she seemed like she was the person who got men ready for marriage because she would date them and then next thing you know his next girlfriend or wife uh next girlfriend he would marry that woman what jasmina was so critical took zero accountability what she was really good at was pointing out everybody's flaws, sharpening you, making you a better person. So when you left the relationship with her, you went on and the next one was like, oh, dang, he a wonderful man. I thank you, Jasmina. But Jasmina's of the world, the curses of the world, they stay the same. They don't grow. Because they're too focused on sharpening other people, trying to make other people better. So that way they can sit back and do nothing and take a zero accountability. That's why Kirsten is here now at 32, doesn't know how to mop a floor, doesn't know how to cook, doesn't know how to throw a dinner party and decorate a house and be ready on time and doesn't know how to repot a plant. Because probably when someone probably tried to tell her about it, she blamed them for it. But you know what Kirsten knows how to do? She knows how to hang out with a girlfriend. She knows how to have a good time. Kirsten is all a lot of talk around women. She loves to talk to women. But where she has her problem is with men. It's the same thing Gina said in her clip. Gina's going to talk about it next week. Gina's going to say, I was raised by a single mother. And so I know how to get along with women well. I know how to open up to women. I know how to have conversation with women. But when it comes to men, I struggle. That's what I'm explaining to you. Kirsten's problems go back to her family life. They go back to that daddy. I'm quite sure Kirsten knows how to have good relationships with women and ladies. She's in a sorority. She probably got a lot of a sorority sisters, a lot of friends. When she's with the lady, she knows how to laugh and have a good time. But I'm telling you, she struggles with men in relationships because a man pose a different type of threat to her, which she views as a threat, and that's why she has a problem with it. Remember when uh, she and Shaq went roller skating, and uh, Shaq was talking about, I want to know all of you, I want to know uh, Kristen the, the daughter, Kristen the sister, or Kristen the girlfriend, Kristen the this, and then he says, I want to get to know your family, your mother, your father, your friends. Did you see the look on Kirsten's face when he started talking about, I want to know your family? She looked scared. She does not want Shaq to meet anybody in her family. A none. None. She don't want anybody. Her daddy didn't even want to come to her wedding. Her, her, um, uh, her family, her mama barely wanted to be on camera too. That's why she was late to that little makeup session before the wedding. We didn't really see her brother. None of them wanted to be on camera. At the after party last week, Kirsten was talking about she has so much pressure on her to be perfect because she thinks she needs to be the role model for her brothers and sisters. Oh, why? Your mom and daddy aren't role models? Sure, you want to be a role model. Everyone does. But why is there so much pressure? There are, are there no other role models in your family? Is all the pressure on you to be the role model? There are no other successful people in your family, people who are, who are living right, doing things the right way, where you don't have to be the complete role model for your brothers and sisters? What's going on, Kirsten? I'm telling you, 
Kirsten's life is in chaos in the background, and this is part of why she doesn't want anyone to see it, especially a man. She doesn't want a man to get close to it because she's afraid that if a man got close, he would judge her for it, and then he would reject her. But I don't know, all you guys think Kirsten somehow is all about the attraction. It's not that. People think when Kirsten is saying, I want you near me, I want you to talk to me, I want you to coddle me, I want you to come closer to me, you guys think Kirsten is faking it. She is not faking it. I told you earlier on that all the pickiness was not a way to push you away. The pickiness was to draw you near. The pickiness, the pickiness was so you'd keep working harder. That is the problem right now. Shaq is giving up, and what Kirsten is now complaining about is you're, you're moving away from me, Shaq. You should be coming closer to me. You should be holding me more. You should be talking to me more. You should be doing all these things more. And people, and it feels like mixed signals, but if you think about it, it is a mixed signals. She was the baby. The pickiness is the baby crying. The baby isn't crying because the baby wants you to leave, leave, uh, leave her alone on the couch by herself. The baby is crying because she wants you to pick her up. She wants you to put her on, on your lap. She wants you to play with her right? She wants you to rock her. She wants you to coddle her. She wants you to feed her. That's why the baby's crying. The baby ain't crying because the baby wants to be independent and left alone. This is Kirsten. This isn't a lie. This is really who she is. This is why I'm telling you she needs some help to figure all this out. And people should stop saying she's being fake and phony and she's playing for the cameras. She's not. This is who she really is. She told you that it was a problem in her last relationship that she didn't open up in the relationship. She told you that the last man cheated on her, he was with her for four years, that they lived together. Probably, he probably did cheat on her because it was probably like, I, I can't get nothing from you. She probably was withholding a sex from him and probably blaming it on his inches. Because she knows how to flip things and she knows how to blame you for it, even if there is some truth to what she's saying. Now, this is what I'll give her credit for, some of her truth. I don't really see um, Shaq actually doing romantic things with Kirsten. Now, I understand why he's not doing them because how it started, because what, he, what she did was... She used that pickiness and that I'm going to talk about your looks to keep you away. It's the same thing uh, uh, Gina did over there with Clint. We're going to get to that video. But people who are afraid of you getting close to, close to them emotionally, one of the things they do is they come up with these tactics to keep you away. And the best way to keep a person away, I'm telling you, is with a put down. The, the best way to keep a person away from you is with a put down. And Gina started her marriage off with a put down. Kirsten started her marriage with a put down and Eris started her uh, marriage with a put down. They are the kings and queens of put down because really what's happening is these people do not want closeness. They're afraid of emotional uh, connections and the put downs, the pickiness uh, keeps you away. It is their guard. It is their shield. It is their wall. It's a oozy. You come close, I'm going to fire off some put downs on you to keep you away. That's what Kirsten is doing. But I will say this. I understand why Shaq has been hesitant to really go forward. But if you look at just Shaq all by himself, I'm telling you guys, he actually doesn't do a lot to really chase Kirsten. He doesn't do too much. I'm going to say this. And I understand it, one, because of what Kirsten did, but I also think it is a part of who Shaq is. I told you guys that Shaq and Kirsten were very, very much alike. Very much alike. Now, the question is going to be, are the areas in which they are alike, do they do well? A lot of you thought Kirsten should be with Eris. No, they shouldn't. Because Kirsten and Eris suffer from the same thing, and that is that they are scared of emotional intimacy. So all they would do in a relationship is keep blaming each other. That's all they would do. It wouldn't work. You can't have a two fearful people to come close. Even Kirsten said to Shaq in this episode, you're pulling away, Shaq. We can't have a two people pulling away because what she said was that's the role I occupy. <laughs> what she's telling him is you can't be the one pulling away because that's my job. 
I need you to keep coming forward no matter what, no matter if I'm standing still, no matter if I'm taping baby steps, no matter if I'm going backwards, Shaq, I need you to always keep coming forward. I need you to keep coming forward. And that's the same thing Eris is doing to Jasmine. They expect people to keep coming forward even when they're standing still, moving slow, taking baby steps, or going backwards. And here's the problem whereby a Shaq has a more difficult time with this than most. Because I am telling you, the reason Shaq has been out here single in this world is because he is also not a pursuer. Y'all keep thinking it's because he's so-called, you know, maybe he's got some sugar in his tank. No, he's a fraternity boy. OK, he's a fraternity boy and he likes the idea of women chasing him as well. Let's get it clear. He likes to be chased by women, too. And he's probably been chased by women because Shaq has things in which women would be attracted to him. He has a good job. He's smart. He's intelligent. He's a decent looking man. No matter if you think whatever, I don't care what number you give him. He was in a fraternity. OK, it sounds like he might have gone to an HBCU. You don't think there was women going after a Shaq? Either were. But you know what Shaq was? He was picky like Kirsten and he was too good for them. And what he does is he was blaming things like, oh, my job is why I can't have a relationship. No, he's picky. He's just as picky, but he's used to women putting a whole lot of effort to track him down, calling him when he's busy at work, telling him I'm busy at work, I'll give you a call back. He's used to his texts blowing up. He's used to women hunting him down. And now he got this woman cursing over here and not even giving him the time of day, telling him he needs to chase her. This is an uncomfortable position for Shaq because he's never been here either. So the one thing I'll give a credit for cursing is, is she is pointing out that he doesn't do a whole lot of chasing either because he hasn't had to in the past. He hasn't had to in the past. And so now Kirsten is over here saying, I need a more from you. This is what they share in common. I'm telling you people, sometimes things in common can, common can work against you in a relationship and sometimes it can work better. I still think these two could make a, a good couple. But right now, what's going on is now that Kirsten has made some baby steps, now that she is giving him pecks on the lips. Later on, I guess we see next week, she's going to actually uh, tongue him down and give him a tongue kiss. Uh, but now what you got is you got the ego of Shaq is all hurt because he's an after party, y'all. And he says it. He says right now, all of a sudden, before you didn't want me and now you all up on me. You know that song, before you didn't want me, and now you all up on me. And now Shaq is, he's trying to now play the ego card. And now what he's going to start doing is he's going to be on some get back ego stuff and going to be like, nah, Kirsten, you didn't want me before, and now you want me. Ego. Ego. Even her girlfriend says, I don't understand how Shaq isn't doing these things you say, Kirsten, because at the wedding, he was all over you. Even her friends know these stories aren't adding up with Kirsten. If you notice what Kirsten does is she tells one story to one person and then another story. In the after party, Eris tells a story that Kirsten told uh, Jasmine that, hey, all that Shaq needs to do is light a candle and turn on some R&B music. Now, we all know that's a lie. So what Kirsten is doing in front of Jasmine is trying to make it seem like it's, it is Shaq's fault that there's no intimacy. That's what she's saying now. So what you notice is no matter where she is, she tells a different story. And each time, depending on where she is, she twists the story to blame another person for why there's no intimacy. And so how the heck can all he need to do is light a candle and turn on some R&B music and, and you aren't even doing anything else with him? She lying. She's lying because she doesn't want people to know that the intimacy issues are really mainly her intimacy issues. She's got intimacy issues. Shaq may have ego issues. He definitely does. He wants a woman probably to chase him a little bit more. He definitely has ego issues. But Kirsten has intimacy issues. Those are two different things. Shaq has an ego problem. And Kirsten has an intimacy issue. Like Kirsten said, you're not supposed to just walk in the house and just say hi and not come over, give me a hug and a kiss. Well, Kirsten, why don't you get up when he comes into the house and you walk over to him and give him a hug and kiss? That's what I do to my husband. If I'm at home and my husband walks in the door and I'm sitting on the couch, I don't stay sitting on the couch and then expect my husband necessarily to come in, walk in, or bend down and give me a hug and a kiss. No, I get up and walk over and give him a hug and a kiss. It's called greeting at the door. 
Where do you think the saying came from? Agree me at the door. It is you putting forth the effort to get up, walk to the door and welcome the person home or in the house. When guests come over, do you sit on the couch and wait for the guests to come in your door and walk over to you? No, Kirsten, you get up. It's like I told you, she wasn't even ready to throw no house party. She don't even know how to greet a man when he come home. She talking about he needs to come home and give her a hug and kiss. No, you need to get up and walk over to him and give him a hug and a kiss. Good Lord, this woman has it all backwards and she loves to blame other people for stuff she should be doing. She like both people can't have walls up. So then it's your job to get the walls down, Shaq, and not hers. Like I tell you, the queen of flip. The queen of flip. If Eris is the founder, she's now the CEO of the company. Founder and CEO of the queen and kings of flip, Kirsten. You see this little skating party that they have for the 30, 30, um, 30 day anniversary. I thought it was a cute, a party. I thought that was fun. Kirsten let go. She had some fun. She was doing her little tricks on, the, on it. She was having a good time skating, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's Kirsten's element. I'm telling you, Kirsten knows how to party. You remember her at the strip club? She was all up on the next. She knows how to party. Her problems are intimacy issues with men. But she knows how to party. She's a sorority girl. She's been in plenty of them. She knows how to get down. You saw her on that dance floor. Kirsten knows how to get down. But as long as it don't involve a sharing no feelings... Ah, and digging into her background you can have a really good time but the minute you start talking about sharing feelings intimacy and asking her about her background and her family life she, mom's is the word mom is the word and you know she's gonna flip it on you real quick to get off that subject Kirsten says she letting her walls down a bit by bit girl she moving as slow as a turtle slow as a turtle but you know what it probably feels like big moves to Kirsten she probably feels like she's making big strides because she probably never has moved this fast in any relationship 30 days she's talking about the stuff you getting from me Shaq in 30 days it probably has taken me a three Three, three months to get here with other men. This white person is out here single. Ain't no man waiting this long for a kiss on the cheek or a kiss on the lips or some tongue. No man out there is waiting this long for that. I don't care how nice her body is. I don't care how cute she is. That man is going to be on to other stuff, dating other women, sleeping with other women while he's calling her. And then she's going to be like, well, I don't want to talk to you because I already know you're talking to other women. He ain't putting all his eggs in a Kirsten. Who would? She's too much of a risk. When Shaq sat up there and said, um, you put me on blast at that dinner, that's something we should be talking about behind closed doors. Why didn't you tell me we, we, you felt that way? Kirsten said, because you didn't ask. <laughs> I'm telling you, the queen of the flip, Kirsten said, because you didn't ask. Are you kidding me? I even, You know what? I'm not even privy to all their conversations. And I have seen Shaq ask Kirsten plenty of times about her feelings. And she wants to tell me that Kirsten, that Shaq hasn't asked her enough. She said, the reason I didn't tell you before is because you didn't ask. And next time you should ask. If you want to know something about my feelings, then you need to ask. So she takes no responsibility that if she has an emotion or she has a feeling that she should talk first. I'm telling you, the queen of the flip. The queen of the flip and zero accountability. Uh, Kirsten ain't going to grow one bit if she doesn't start taking accountability. Even if these two don't stay together, she needs to leave this relationship a better person, which means she cannot keep doing what she does in relationships. And that is the queen of the flip. She's got to learn to take accountability. And this idea that she's letting the wall down, she's doing it too slowly. She needs to do it faster. She's doing it at the pace she wants to do it at. And the truth of the matter is she needs to do it at a pace that's better. She needs to up her game. She may be comfortable with this pace and say, well, I'm working on it, but that's too slow. That's too slow. She needs to come out of her comfort zone and she needs to start doing things that are uncomfortable because that's where her real growth is going to come. And right now, she doesn't want to do anything that's uncomfortable to her. Nothing. And like Shaq said, it's always about Kirsten because what it's about with Kirsten is always about Kirsten's safety and comfortableness. That's what it's about. In other areas of Kirsten's life, you can see how Kirsten actually is a giver because I do think a Kirsten will be the type of person where she would love to do things for Shaq, like that spa day, the heat she gave him. I think Kirsten is a giver in those areas, but what Kirsten isn't a giver in is in her emotions. That's where she's protective. That's where she's not going to give anything of herself. But if it's about going out, if it's about maybe buying you something, 
something transactional, if it's about maybe um, doing other things, she may be a giver in those areas because those don't involve emotions. Those don't involve really opening up your soul. In that area of intimacy and her soul, she's going to be very guarded, protective, and stingy with that. And that is really what Shaq is talking about when he's saying it's all about Kirsten, what Kirsten wants on Kirsten's timeline. And he's correct about that. But the other problem is going to be that Shaq also has that part of him, like I said, where he's used to women chasing him and he doesn't have the sharpest skills in chasing a woman, right? I do think he needs to, in and of itself, he probably needs a, a bit more of chasing a woman and considering a woman's feelings. Because like I said, when he did that thing about going to that seminar and told Kirsten, you just going to come with me, that showed you the sign where, where Shaq is used to doing what he wants to do. When he, when he said, I didn't take the job, and I turned it down, but didn't talk to Kirsten. That's another sign where it shows you what Shaq is used to doing what he wants to do. Okay. So what Kirsten is mentioning, that is a part of Shaq as well, but he's not the bigger problem. See, that's the thing. We all got problems. We all got parts we need to work on. And Shaq has areas he needs to work on. But the bigger problem in this relationship is not Shaq. The biggest problem is the queen of the flip. And that's Kirsten. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Tell me what you think. I'll talk to you later. Be sure to watch my other videos. Bye.